Okay, so here we are. This is lesson number three, and we're going to begin to look at electric circuits. We're going to progress very quickly to um, much more complex circuits, but today we're going to look at some elements. And remember, what we're trying to do is we're trying to build the toolkit that you have in order to analyze some pretty complex circuits. So first of all, some terminology. A series circuit is um, a circuit where all the loads are connected one after another in a single path. Okay, so all of the resistors or all of the light bulbs, whatever, they're all connected in a single path. There's nowhere for the current to go. There's nowhere else for the current to go. There's nowhere else for um, the electrons to travel other than through this one path. And so this right here is a little example of that. Okay, um, it, we should mention that there is a chart in your textbook and um, basically on page 547, uh, chart number 16.5, they're all the circuit symbols. And when you look at that, you will see that this symbol right here is of course a cell or a battery and this kind of zigzag line right here is a resistor. And there's little different symbols for motors, there's symbols for light bulbs, etc, etc, etc. Okay, a parallel circuit as opposed to a series circuit is a circuit where the loads are connected side by side. So there's more than one path for electrons to take. So this would be an example of a parallel circuit where we have the side by side configuration of these um, resistors and electrons can travel here and when they get to this junction or node Electrons have, it, have, have two different paths that they can take. They can go down here to this resistor, or they can carry on and come down here. And so what this means is, is that given a difference of path, this circuit and this circuit have different characteristics. And that's kind of what all this is about, because basically what we're going to do eventually is we're going to combine series circuits and parallel circuits, and we're going to put them into um, um, combination with each other. In order to help explain how current flows um, in, in any circuit, Kirchhoff studied the ways that um, all of these different parameters behave. And so he published these things called Kirchhoff's Laws, and there's two of them, and we're going to look at them now. So Kirchhoff's current law states that current into a junction equals current out of a junction. Okay, so any current that flows into one part of a circuit has to equal the current coming out. This is like the conservation of current. You can't create electrons, they can't appear out of nowhere, they can't vanish into nothing. The number of electrons that flow into one part has to equal the number of electrons or the, the current that flows out. Okay, Kirchhoff's voltage law says that the total of all voltage increases in a circuit has to equal the total of all voltage decreases in a circuit. So if there's 12 volts available to be used in a circuit because of a 12 volt battery, that voltage will all be used by whatever happens to be in that closed loop. Okay, whatever happens to be in that closed loop of that circuit or that part of the circuit will be used up. There's no saving voltage for a rainy day. It's all used in the circuit. So let's look at these things graphically so that we can kind of understand. Um, here's a section of a circuit, and I've got current one flowing into this node, current two flowing in, and current three flowing in, and then I've got some total current flowing out. And then when I get to this node, I've got current four that goes this way and current five that goes this way. So Kirchhoff's first law, his current law, tells us that these three currents, I1 plus I2 plus I3, all of these three that are flowing into this node, they have to equal the, the current that flows out of this node, and that's I total. It also remains to be, to be seen that the current that's flowing into this node equals the current that's flowing out, so I total also equals I4 plus I5. This will become very, very important later on. Kirchhoff's voltage law was that if I had a 12 volt battery or some total voltage here and I had a resistor and a resistor and a resistor and I measured the voltage across this resistor and the voltage across this resistor and the voltage across this resistor 
whatever's being supplied here will be used by V1, V2, and V3. And so really his voltage law tells us that the total amount of voltage increases VT is equal to the total number of voltage decreases. All right, so let's examine a circuit. Here it is. We're going to examine this, and we're going to say, all right, we want to use Kirchhoff's laws to solve for our missing valuable var variables. Excuse me. So I need to find I3, and I need to find V2. Okay. I got 100 volts available here. As I go around this path, and because of the inquiry activities that we've done, kind of when you were building some of these circuits, you, you may be able to, to recognize this. If I've got 10 amps that's flowing through here, I've got 10 amps of current flowing through here, and I've got 10 amps of current flowing through here, how much current is flowing in this circuit? And you are probably saying, oh, there's 10 amps. So it means that at every single point in this circuit, 10 amps are flowing, and so that means that by inspection, I can say that I3 is equal to 10 amps. Okay. I also know that if I've got 100 volts here and I basically choose this loop and I go around, I say, okay, well, this is a voltage increase. I'm using 30 volts of potential here. I'm using 30 volts of potential down here. How many volts of potential am I using at this point? Well, I can say that 100 is equal to 30 plus V2 plus 30, and I can simply rearrange and solve, and I can say that V2 is equal to 40 volts, and that's by Kirchhoff's voltage law. Okay? We could also then solve for these values of resistance by simply saying V equals IR for each of these, and I could find out how much resistance each of these resistors has. We'll save that for another time. Here's a parallel circuit, and we're going to analyze this. We're going to use Kirchhoff's laws, and we're going to find the missing values of voltage and current. Now, I've labeled this node right here, this junction. This is junction 1, and this node right here, this is, of course, junction 2. Okay, And I've got 30 volts being supplied to this circuit. So let's look initially at node 1. And I know that I have 9 amps that flows into this circuit. And I've got 3 amps that flow out of this circuit, out of this node. Well, it means that there's a certain number of amps that are going along this portion. So I have 9 amps that flow into node 1. And I see here, oh, this is 3 amps that's running through it. So I have 3 amps of current that are leaving this node, coming down to this resistor. So how many, node, how many amps do I have left over that are leaving the node, going to this whole section of the circuit? Well, the current that's going to resistors 2 and 3, I2, 3, is then 6 amps. And that's just by Kirchhoff's voltage law. This helps me because now, how much current flows into node 2? Well, we just said that 6 amps of current leave node 1 on its way for node 2. And 3 amps we see right here is flowing through here, so the amount of current that flows through I3 is 3 amps. And that's by Kirchhoff's current law. It is. It happens to be just a coincidence of this problem that this 3 amps, this 3 amps, and that this 3 amps are all the same. Um, that definitely will not always be the case. That certainly will not always be the case. So that is a coincidence. Current will split in different amounts depending on these different resistors. All right. So we need to find V2, and we need to find a closed loop to, to do Kirchhoff's voltage law. And so here's a closed loop. Current can travel along this loop right here, this path. And that's kind of been indicated by this curly arrow here. And so... Along this path, the number of current increases, 30 volts, has to equal the number of current decreases. 
and but there's only one current decrease here, and that's V2, because along this path there are no other resistors anywhere except for R2. So here we are that V2 is equal to 30 volts, and that's by Kirchhoff's voltage law. So that's a quick um, example of how to analyze some of these circuits. We will spend a lot more time in class working with some of these. But let's turn our attention to looking at resistors in series and parallel, because this is very often another way that we can, we can help to analyze a circuit. We can find the total resistance in the circuit by using Kirchhoff's laws to simplify. Um, resistors in series. Okay, so if I have a whole bunch of resistors that are side by side, just like this, I can find an equivalent resistance, RT, of all of these resistors side by side by adding up the value of those resistors. Okay, so the total resistance that's represented, the equivalent total resistance of these, is the resistance R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 plus R5. For resistors in parallel, which looks a little bit different, anytime you have something that looks like this, we can create an equivalent total resistance that looks like this, but we don't add them up like we do for series, we add them up like we do, um, we add their inverses together here. And so really we need to see how this works in an example. So here's example three. What is the series equivalent if I have a 10 ohm, a 20 ohm, and a 30 ohm resistor, um, resistors, and they're all connected in series? Well, I know that the equivalent resistance of these things is 10 plus 20 plus 30, so the total equivalent resistance is 60 ohms. Okay. And so basically what this would look like is, okay, here's my circuit diagram. I've got a 10 ohm, a 20 ohm, and a 30 ohm resistor, and they're all connected in, in series like this. And what I can do is, is I can simplify this circuit so that it basically just looks like one overall total equivalent resistance. And this would help me, especially if I knew the voltage, this would help me find the current that's going through this. Okay, so what's the parallel equivalent resistance of a 25 ohm, a 40 ohm, and a 10 ohm resistor in parallel. And so here we need to add their inverses. So we've got 1 over the equivalent resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And we substitute these values in here. And when we add them up, we get 33 over 200. Now we need to find a common denominator here and then um, you know, solve for that common denominator. If you happen to have a calculator that works fractions, this is really, really handy. Um, so then the total resistance, this is 1 over the total resistance. The total resistance, of course, is just the inverse of this 33 over 200, so 200 over 33, which happens to be about 6.1 ohms. So graphically, what does this look like? Well, I've got a 25 ohm, a 40 ohm, and a 10 ohm resistor all in parallel with each other. And what I've actually managed to do is find the equivalent resistance of all of these and say it's right here in a 6.1 ohm equivalent resistor. And again, this would help me find a total current in the circuit.